welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 270. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. And this is a podcast about mostly knitting and sewing and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from and I live with my husband Dennis and our adorable cat Bella. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. And oh my gosh, oh my goodness, oh my stars, it is episode 270. Episode 300 is is coming up. Oh my gosh, you guys. Craziness. Anyway, um, that that's a little bit further down the line, but still, it, it's getting close. But anyway, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful um, spring day here in Bushwick, Brooklyn, and uh, I'm kind of kicking myself for not being outside right now because the sun is out. It's nice and warm. I, I believe it's in the 50s somewhere. Um, I think it's supposed to get up to the 60s, and anyway, it's it's just really nice outside and I ho I'm hoping to just, you know, get some outdoor knitting time at some point today. But um, enough about the weather. Uh, let's get into what I've been making. Oh, but first, uh, a couple of administrati notes. Uh, where you can follow me on the interwebs, I am at Vine on Instagram where I'm most active. Uh, you can also follow me on Ravelry. I'm Vine on there as well. Show notes for this episode and all other episodes can be found over on the blog at www.yarngasmpodcast.com. And if you haven't already, please do join the Yarngasm Ravelry group. So unfortunately, no finished objects this week, but uh, I do have some works in progress to share with you. Uh, however, <laughs> um, I have to say I was pretty monogamous when it came to working on the Impressionists MCAL Mystery Knit Along, which is a mystery knit along designed by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And uh, being that it is a mystery knit along, I don't want to spoil anything for you. And last week, I apologize. Oh my goodness, I, <laughs> when I edited last week's episode, I didn't realize that I cut out the part where I said, look away from the camera, I'm gonna show you some spoilers. I'm sorry if I spoiled anything for you guys, I had no clue, like, after I uploaded it that I accidentally cut that part out where I just said, look away. Um, so, I'm sorry, but uh, this week I will make sure that that part is in there. I'm about to show you clue three of the... Impressionists and Cal from Curious Handmade. So if you would not like to see these spoilers, look away for the from the camera right now, or I will pop a timestamp in the down bar where you can skip ahead to the other parts of the episode. So um, anyway, I'm about to show it to you. Um, again, I won't mention anything, any detail about the pattern other, other than the yarn that I'm using and some other non-descript details. But anyway, um, this, I am currently working my way through clue three. I'm a little behind, but here's what I have so far. And I am loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it, you guys. Um, so yeah, this is my hand dyed yarn. I dyed up some kits for the MCAL, uh, in my, on my Nouveau base. So this color right here is, let's see, Solstice, this white light speckled. Um, and then here is my Curious colorway, which is kind of like a movie, um, speckled color with browns, teals, and pinks in there, and then this really beautiful um, navy slash violet purplish uh, movie color is uh, Thaw. So yeah, it's it's growing, you guys. It is, I have a feeling this is going to be huge. Emily, uh, who's Slow Fashion Rebel, told me she finished hers. By the way, I don't know how she finished hers over the weekend. Clue 4 was released on Saturday last Saturday and she powered through that clue and was done by Sunday and I don't lady if you're watching how 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 did you power through that so quickly um so yeah I'm still working my way through clue three um but loving every moment of it when I do get to work on it um as I mentioned I was very monogamous to this but also um last Sunday uh, inspiration struck and I started a new shawl design. So <laughs> Sunday was kind of lost to me just embracing the inspiration and going and diving right into that new shawl design. So um, this took a little bit of a break, but during the week I, um, I sat down and I worked through the rest of Clue 2 and began, uh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, I completed Clue 2 and then work, started uh, Clue 3. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping a steady pace with this, uh, my own pace. So anyway, um, yeah, so this is where I am, as I mentioned. So if you have been averting your eyes, you can look, you can look back now. Um, yeah, so enjoying every moment of it and 
as I suspected. So anyway, that is where I am with that. And then I did uh, find time to work on some socks. <laughs> These have just kind of been like on and off socks. Again, my sock knitting mojo has not really been up to up to par, up to game, however you want to describe it. It's just been it's been what it is uh, and it's just been like something that I pick up when I'm watching TV with Dennis or we're in a car ride and or I'm talking on the phone. I knit on socks a lot while I'm talking on the phone because I can just go around and around and around. I don't have to think about or look down at what I'm working on. Um, but here is where I am. I cast on a pair of plain vanilla socks cuffed down uh, using my hand dyed yarn, Volona Vine Yarns, on the footsie base in the Edinburgh colorway. and. We have a heel turn. Yeah, and you might be asking me, like, Kristen, why what, DPNs? What's going on here? Um, yeah, I, I just thought I would switch things up a little bit. You know, it's been a while since I knit on DPNs and I don't know, I was just feeling it. Do you guys do that where you have like a favorite knitting tool or technique that you like to do and then you just, I feel I liken it to doing the same heel for every sock. So, you know, right now I'm really liking Fish Lips Kiss Heels. Um, the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, I should say, uh, which is a, pa a pay for pattern. I believe it's only a dollar by the Socks Therapist. I'll put it in the down bar. I, I could be wrong with that name, but no, forgive me. So anyway, as I was saying, it's kind of like sticking with the same sock heel pattern for all of your socks because that's what you're comfortable with. That's what you're used to. That's what you like. And then you, something just clicks and you're like, Today I feel like doing an after afterthought heel, or today I feel like doing a German short row heel, or you know, whatever. It's I kind of liken it to that. I felt like switching things up a little bit. So DPNs for the sock it is. Um, it might have had something to do with Isabel from Fluffy Fiber. She was going on about how she really enjoyed knitting on DPNs, and then it, that just got me thinking, like, hmm, it's been a while since I've knit a pair of socks on DPNs. Let me take it for another spin. So anyway, that's the ma method behind this madness right here. But yeah, um, nothing else to write home about about this project, but yay! Um, sock project on the go. Okay, I have a feeling this is going to be a very short episode <laughs> because that is all the knitting that I have to talk about with you today. Um, sewing, I didn't get any sewing done this weekend, unfortunately. I cut out some fabric, but again, nothing to write home about, nothing worth talking about on the podcast this week. But I, I did, ma oh, my face is super bright. I did manage to cut out fabric, but nothing, <laughs> no progress worth sharing with you on the podcast. Uh, however, if you are curious, I am wearing a handmade garment. This is the lady skater dress, uh, one of my incarnations of it. I think I've made five at this point. This is one of my favorite versions and my probably the most worn lady skater dress that I've made. Uh, it's just some, I forget who makes it, but I'll stand up so you can see. Uh, it has these little tiny illustrated um, stars on it, and it's just super cute, super versatile, and I, I practically live in these dresses, you guys. Uh, again, as I mentioned, I've probably made five, and I want to make five more. Uh, just, you know, have a whole, a whole superhero closet full of lady skater dresses. <laughs> and uh, it's a pattern uh, by Kichi Koo. And I, I again, um, I get a lot of questions about uh, this pattern, and I always link to it in the show notes uh, on yarngasmpodcast.com. So if you are curious, I link to the pattern uh, where you can find it there. Uh, and it's a downloadable uh, PDF pattern. So uh, definitely check it out. Um, it just, it's a simple, a-line skater dress uh, that uses jersey fabric and I love it. So um, yeah, and I'm trying to think uh, what else. Oh, and I just wanted to say uh, thank you so much to everybody who um, who suggested things that I do with that crazy uh, like metallic gray wedding dress fabric <laughs> that I purchased last week that I showed off. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it yet. I'm still tossing around a couple of ideas, but uh, there were some really great ideas uh, that a lot of people um, threw at me. Uh, not threw at me, but like suggested, wonderfully suggested. <laughs> um, and one, a couple of those were to line it with um, black fabric, to, so to kind of tone down because it's such a it's a very light uh, silvery gray with. Um, I want to say like a metallic silver pattern going going on with it. So um, I love that idea because yeah, if you line it with black, it kind of shows through to the main the the fashion side of the fabric. So that would kind of essentially tone things down. So I love that idea. And then someone said, you know, just make a dress out of it um, and throw chuck a chuck a black cardigan over it just to kind of tone things down. And I love that idea as well. 
Um, and then Emily, uh, again, who comes over and help, she's my friend and she comes over and helps me package yarn every week, as I mentioned. Um, she suggested, you know, kind of using it to make kind of like a, a beachy tunic um, and I love that idea as well uh, I have to say like I love that idea and that would be perfect for it but the more I thought about it I'm like I don't really wear tunics so much um, but at the same time there's one pattern by Se I think it's Seamwork yeah Seamwork makes this really beautiful um, kind of like beach cover-up pattern I don't want to call it a moo moo but that's what it reminds me of but at the same time it's, it's just a beach cover-up um, so that might be in the running. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But anyway, lots of great ideas. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, it's always appreciated anytime you suggest anything. Um, and that also reminds me, my pronunciation. <laughs> I'm the queen of butchering words. It's amazing. Um, uh, my pronunciation of Shali. So my, one of my favorite fabrics to sew with is Shali. And last week I was calling it Shali's. <laughs> so it is Shali. Um, so thank you so much uh, for pointing that out as well. Always appreciate it. Uh, so that said, ah, uh, yes, the hip hop crowd has arrived outside. <laughs> if it's not a guy revving up his motorcycle, it's somebody parked out front of my house um, with their windows open and stereo blasting. Welcome to Bushwick. Let's talk about rabbit holes, shall we? Um, weaving. Weaving is the current rabbit hole and I brought down my um, Sample It Loom by Ashford. It's an Ashford Sample It 10 inch uh, rigid heddle loom and I've been having so much fun with it and it's super lightweight you guys. You can take this anywhere like seriously. I don't think it's more than five pounds. It's very very light um, and yeah as you can see I warped a new a new scarf on it and this is yes in fact the um, 15 dent read that I ordered that I talked about last week and as you can see it is has super fine slots um, in which uh, it's more suitable for lace weight so um, what you're looking at here is some Malabrigo lace uh, and it's been so long since I've worked with Malabrigo lace it is it was my gateway drug to really nice yarn um, I forgot what pod this is going back years ago but um, there used to be an audio podcast called here's to you they were really fun to listen to. They don't podcast anymore. Um, they, they definitely pod faded, but um, it was a really fun podcast and they I learned about Malabrigo yarn from them and that, you know, I was just like, she was, I remember clear as day that one of the hosts, the co-host was knitting a bucket hat out of Malabrigo and the way she said Malabrigo was just like, I need, I need to try that yarn and was a total convert. So um, yeah, I have to say, um, I really do enjoy Malabrigo and again, it's been a while since I've worked with it and weaving with it takes it to a whole nother level, you guys. Um, although I will say, uh, because it is a single ply lace weight, it does have, I've noticed it does have a tendency to pill as I'm beating down each pick. So, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but yeah there are a couple of um little pills in there but honestly i think it adds it adds so much texture or not so much but it adds like a really nice texture to the finished woven product so i'm really really i'm actually really enjoying it um so i warped it last last sunday i warped it no no no. when did i warp it i warped it last friday um and yeah i haven't made much progress on it because you know MCAL shawl, new shawl design, that this kind of took a little bit of a backseat over the weekend, but um, I got started really liking it when I do work on it. I, I improvised this, I just warped it, whatever came to mind, I was like, let me do a, a crazy gradient and it'll create a nice little abstract plaid effect. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, if you're wondering what colors I'm using, this dark one right here is Black Forest, and this gray one here is Palomo, and this one right here is Applewood. So it's kind of like a peachy mauve color. So I noticed with uh, Malabrigo yarn, their dye lots tend to vary greatly. Um, the, no dye lot is ever the same, and sometimes they, yeah, there is a significant difference. Um, the last time I knit with their Black Forest color, which was the dark shaded gray that I just showed you. Um, I knit, several years ago, I knit a baby cardigan for my nephew when he was like this tiny, <laughs> now he's he's older. But anyway, uh, I knit a cardigan for him out of uh, Malabrigo worsted in Black Forest and it had kind of like a really interesting, um, like dark, 
iridescence to it, if that makes any sense. However, in the lace weight yarn that I received for, for this project, it was just a basic shaded black, basically. So um, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, that is where I am with that. I did make a mistake with warping again, even though I was, <laughs> I thought I was super careful with it. It's, I don't know what it is with me. My brain just, I don't know what it is. I just, I, I, no matter how carefully I think I warp this thing, it's just, there's always one mistake, one or two mistakes in there. So anyway, I'm going with it. I'm not kicking myself, learning, having fun. Um, yeah, I think next time I weave with the, with the 15 dent, I am going to try something with silk content and with a ply to it, uh, you know, just to experiment and you know, have fun. So yeah, and again, thank you to everybody who recommended uh, books and tutorials. Uh, I think her name's Kelly Casanova on YouTube. I, I have been watching her YouTube tutorials. She's awesome. Um, and uh, some other books I've been checking out as well and Weevolution and all those things. So I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, dabbling, dabbling, down this rap, dabbling down this rabbit hole. I don't even know if that makes sense. It doesn't make sense. But anyway, I'm having a lot of fun with weaving at the moment. So uh, yeah, we'll see where that goes. Uh, so moving along, it's been a while since I pulled something out of the Ask Away thread, which is a thread in the Yarngasm Ravelry group where you can ask me pretty much anything you like pertaining to the podcast or about me or what have you, whatever comes to mind uh, within reason. Um, and once in a while, I will pull a question from there and answer it. So uh, this week we have a question from Heather, who is Cedar Lane Knits on Ravelry, and she asks, uh, do you have any advice for someone who wants to learn more about hand dyeing yarn? I find it so fascinating and think it would be a super fun hobby. And any go-to resources or materials that a new dyer should know about. Thanks, your yarn is beautiful and I love your podcast. Thank you so much, Heather. Um, so yeah, I've touched on this several times throughout my podcasting <laughs> experience or what have you, um, but you know, I feel like it's worth uh, mentioning uh, again from time to time um, because yeah, it's, I've been podcasting for quite some time. But um, yeah, so by the way, I do list all these sources in, it's kind of hard to find, but if you go on to uh, yarngasmpodcast.com and up at the top menu, FAQs, I list all my resources, be it equipment, um, dyeing resources, spinning resources, what have you. Um, so it's all linked and listed there, but uh, you know, just for podcast, per pod podcasting recording purposes, I'll mention some of my favorite um, sources for learning how to hand dye yarn. And yes, it is a super fun hobby. It, it's a it's an even more fun career, I will say that. So, um, but yeah, if you are looking to get started, I think the, the first place to get started would be with YouTube um, and food coloring. Um, I know Knit Picks offers a variety of uh, super blank superwash bases. Uh, you can go on there and you can purchase bare undyed yarn from their line of um, their line of yarns. So I recommend superwash yarns uh, if you are just getting started because it, superwash yarn is amazing for um, it takes color so well if you're looking for those super saturated um, colors and uh, yeah food coloring and ask and I would I would start out with food coloring and vinegar and if you go onto YouTube and just do a search for hand dyeing yarn with food color you will find a plethora of uh, YouTube tutorials on how to do that so definitely check that out um, if you want to up the ante and go a little more advanced um you can definitely check out um i know on uh craftsy right now sarah air who was the dyer behind cephalopod yarns and um the sang sanguine griffin uh which is no longer uh however sarah has been teaching several classes on craftsy on how to hand dye yarn so definitely check that out i believe one of the classes is called Prof um, professional yarn dyeing at home and she just came out with a new one so that is another place to start um, another one is Dying in the Kitchen with Deb Menz, and that is a download from Interweave. So if you go on interweave.com, you can uh, definitely download that, and she shows you how to dye yarn in your kitchen, as the title suggests. Um, another great book resource is to uh, check out Dying to Spin a Knit by Felicia Lowe, who is the dyer behind Sweet Georgia Yarns. She has an amazing teaching aesthetic, um, and her dyeing is just incredible. 
um, and you know she just came out with this book a bit I believe about a year ago I actually own it um, I you know being a professional hand dyer I own these books as well because I find them very handy at times um, you know if I have to refer to something um, specific so anyway um, there's that and then the other one that I wanted to mention is hand dyeing yarn and fleece by Gail Callahan so that's another book that you can um, download uh, or download I'm sure yeah I believe you can download it but also purchase it on Amazon so uh, and I would also be very 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 remiss uh, not to mention my good friend Lara of <laughs> Jinx Yarns who is the whole reason I started dyeing yarn in the first place she inspired me to give it a give it a go um, so yeah Lara uh, is the dyer behind Jinx Yarns and she has the dyer's notebook podcast and she has several uh, hand dyeing yarn tutorials on her on her YouTube channel as well so um, you know, definitely check her out. I will link, of course, I will link to all these again in the show notes, um, so you can easily access them and, uh, check them out. But, uh, yeah, anyway, YouTube, always a great place to start for these things. Uh, food coloring, vinegar, your gold. So I hope you found that super helpful. Um, and yeah, again, superwash yarn is a great beginner based, any, any superwash base, be it worsted or fingering is a great place to start. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, there is that. Uh, so anyway, okay, I am gonna move along to shop update uh, because I am having a shop update tomorrow, Friday, April 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And that said, I'm gonna go get the yarns that I will have in the shop for you. So uh, if you have been following me on the interwebs, social media, uh, you might be aware that I have, <laughs> I have some new bases to share with you. Uh, I teased it last week that I was auditioning some new uh, lace weight bases because the weather is warming up and not everyone is a fan of sitting there with woolies on their lap while they're sitting on the beach knitting. So I decided to swap out some bases and that I currently have in my lineup and you know introduce some lace weight bases for you. Uh, and this is and uh, one of them is something that I've been wanting to try for a very long time and I finally bit the bullet. Um, however, you might be aware that mohair is having a moment, so <laughs> I decided to hop on the mohair bandwagon and get myself some, um, some mohair. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I, a lot of you seemed very excited about it, and yeah, I, I am having so much fun dying this, you guys. Um, so yeah, it is, it is incredibly floofy, and this is my Enjoy the Silence colorway, and I'm calling it ghost lace. Uh, it's 72% kid mohair and 28% silk. And yeah, it's, and you're probably wondering if you were, aren't familiar with this type of uh, yarn, uh, what the heck can you make with it other than a ridiculously fluffy sweater? Um, well, yeah, you, you can make a ridiculously fluffy sweater with this because it is a lace weight yarn. You can hold it together with other yarn to add uh, some texture to your knits uh, or just add some, you know, extra, it as, you know, add some extra fluff to your knits. Stephen West uses a lot of this uh, yarn in his patterns and I noticed a lot of other um, patterns coming out that are using incorporating mohair, uh, such as the No Frills Pullover. I'm totally blanking on the designer's name. Uh, Hohi Locatelli is coming out with a new um, cardigan that uses mohair. And yeah, so anyway, it's, it's de as I mentioned, it's definitely having a moment. So. I've been wanting to try dyeing this for a while and I am having so much fun with it. So um, yeah, there's that. And then uh, I, the other one that I have decided to introduce into the shop is uh, this one. So yeah, this is again, enjoy the silence on my new infinite lace base. So what this one is, is it's 100% superwash blue face luster. So it is two ply, it's very, um, has this really delicate halo to it. So I really loved it. Um, and I thought it would be a perfect addition to the Bull and Vine Yarns lineup. So um, yeah, uh, it takes color very, very well. And I am just getting so inspired, like all these ideas for patterns to knit this with. Um, so I don't know, I have to cast on something immediately with this base because I'm excited about it. It's just perfect for summer lightweight, super airy, uh, it has, and there's a lot of yardage in here as well. Uh, seven, I'm sorry, it's 875 yards, 800 meters, hundred grams in one skein. So hence the name infinite lace. It just, it just doesn't quit. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yay, new bases. Here we are. Um, 
can you can you tell I'm excited? Uh, so here they are. And then enjoy the silence. And then I also dyed it up on where is it? Um, Dragon Tears, and I love the way this turned out as well. So Dragon Tears on Ghost Lace, and then Dragon Tears on Infinite Lace. You can see that up close. There you go. Different bases take dye differently. So this was definitely a learning curve for me. So I did dye up some Grim on several bases and here it is on Blitz. I will also have these dyed on Volca and Nouveau as well. Um, and then I dyed it up on, this is what it happened when I tried dyeing it up on Ghost Lace. Not what I was exactly going for. Uh, so this will be a strange brew. I have to play around with the formula a little bit to get it the way I want it. So yeah, if you look closely, you can tell it's more brown than black. So this is a strange brew. Kind of reminds me of a tarantula. So we're going to go with tarantula as a strange brew name. So anyway, um, that I think it's kind of cool though, because you have like this black, like the yarn itself took the black, but then the halo came out brown. So anyway, really interesting um so yeah you can definitely have some fun with that um there's that and then i also dyed up upon popular demand deadcom deadcom will be back in the shop this week here is on nouveau i will also have it on blitzed um and then here it is on this also my cat you guys going crazy um so yeah you can see that it had a very interesting effect on here as well kind of like a seaweed more of like a seaweed green almost it's really cool so anyway there you go dead calm in the shop uh and then i will also have i am no bird so here we go here it is on nouveau and here it is on ghost lace yeah. and then i will also have some more edinburgh so yeah here it is on infinite lace and then here it is on volca base um and I will say because I only ordered a limited amount because I was quote unquote auditioning these bases, uh, infinite lace will be in, I, have a, I, will, I only have a limited amount of uh, infinite lace at this point, but I'm, I just ordered more. So I will have some for a lot more for <laughs> next week's shop update. So um, right now quantities are very limited for the infinite lace, but I do have a lot of ghost lace. So that is fine. I did dye Edinburgh on ghost lace. However, only one skein came out the way I wanted it to. And then again, it's when you're working with a new base, it's a little trial and error. So um, here is how it should have turned out. And then here's how the majority of the batch turned out. It turned out to be like this gossamer type of gray, purplish gray color. Um, so this will be a, a misfit skein or a strange brew colorway in the shop on, on Friday. So I still think it's a really pretty color, just not quite what I was intending, so. So another base that I was auditioning uh, was this lace base. This did not make the cut, although it is, I, I was really torn, you guys. I wanted i wanted to say yes to this base, but at the same time, I could only pick one. Um, <laughs> just, just for my own sanity, I, I need to limit how many bases I have in the shop at, at a time. Um, this is 100% Superwash Merino, um, six ply lace weight yarn, uh, and it's, it's a pretty beefy, <laughs> I hate describing it that way, but it is a pretty beefy base or skein, I should say. Um, there's a lot of yardage in here. It's 150, it's 150 gram skein. Um, but yeah, I wasn't, I was more drawn to the infinite lace than this base. So I will have a very limited quantity, quantity of these. They will, they will be in the shop for sale, whoever wants them. Um, but yeah, I have this, I have this dyed on, um, I'm No Bird, Enjoy the Silence, and Edinburgh, and Dragon Tears. So yeah, four colorways in, on this base as well. Um, but yeah, that said, I am excited for the new bases. I hope you guys are too. Uh, and I'm trying to think what else I want to say. I hope you can make the shop update. And newsletter, yes, I mention every week, you know, if you'd like to stay in in the loop about what colorways and bases I will have in the shop each week and any other news regarding Volan Vine yarns, uh, definitely sign up for the newsletter. Um, and you can do that by going to volanvineyarns.com, scrolling all the way down to the bottom and entering your email there. And every week um, I send out a newsletter letting you, keeping you in the know about all things Volan Vine. So yay, okay, I think that said, 
I'm gonna move along to Blather, a segment where I chat about what's been going on in my life. Should you care to stick around? So as far as what's been happening in my life, um, nothing much to write home about. Um, I will say it's been pretty business as usual as it usually is uh, this weekend is the Brooklyn yarn crawl uh, I don't know if I'm going to be, be able to make it out um, some friends of ours are going to be in town from California we haven't seen them in probably a year it's been crazy but yeah we're pretty close with them and they're going to be in town so we're gonna see if we can get together with them as much as we can and then uh, yeah if I do get to make it out it would be really great to hit up some local yarn shops in Brooklyn and hang out with friends but lord knows I don't need any more yarn or <laughs> anything said no knitter ever but um, yeah I would just really like to get to hang out with some of my friends uh, my knitting friends that I don't get to see that often either um, so you know fingers crossed I can make that happen um, what else? Uh, yeah, if you've been following my Instagram stories, you guys, I'm trying to get better at Instagram stories. It's something that I'm not used to taking advantage of, so I'm trying to trying to take advantage of it and do more with it because it seems like I love following people's Instagram stories. I think they're a lot of fun, so I'm I'm trying to hop on that bandwagon. But uh, yeah, if you've been following my Instagram stories, uh, I posted a photo of me on the treadmill. <laughs> Uh, several years ago, I want to say like three years ago, I begged Dennis for a treadmill for my birthday and you can probably guess what happened. Used it for like three weeks and then sat in the corner doing nothing. So, um, long story short, this is a total tangent, but, um, but that's what this, that's, that's what this segment is for, right? Tangents. So anyway, long story short, we were in Target and I walked past the, the athletic section, the athletic wear section, and I was just thinking like, wow, those are some really cute workout clothes. <laughs> and uh, guys, I don't, I don't work out at all. I don't even wear athletic wear, athleisure. Um, I don't wear sneakers ever. I'm not that type of girl. <laughs> I love, I love my dresses and boots and you know, but anyway, I was walking past the section and I was like really taken by their outfits. And I was like, okay, you know what? I have a treadmill, it hasn't been getting any love. Um, I really should <laughs> work out, you know, get my cardio, my heart rate up, you know, every couple of times during the week or what have you. Um, it, it's just overall, it would be good for me. It's a, it would be a good habit to have, just to, you know, do a little run every other day or so um, and build up from there. So, you know, I, I used that as motivation. I treated myself to some new workout outfits, uh, got myself some new sneakers, and yeah, I've been sticking with it. It's so far, fingers crossed, it's been going really well. You know, again, baby steps. I'm not doing any crazy distances or anything. I'm doing, uh, I'm running every other day uh, for about a half an hour, and you know, I even researched it online, like how to get into running, uh, you know, jogging or what have you, and they say, you know, the best way to get into it without killing yourself is to, <laughs> Uh, run in intervals. So every other day, um, as I said, a half an hour and then running, uh, you know, a, a high paced walk, a brisk walk for two minutes and a sprint for two minutes. Walk, run, walk, run every two minutes, on and off for every two minutes for 30 minutes. So I find that's been really, that's been really working out for me. Um, breaking a sweat, great. Uh, yeah, so I will say that I did start running before I left for the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I was on a good schedule and then <laughs> Edinburgh happened and I came back and I fell off the wagon. Uh, but this past weekend, I decided to get back into it and it's been really good so far. I'm not inactive, but I definitely, the most active I am is dyeing yarn, which is a good arm workout. You know, it's, I'm moving around constantly. I, we have stairs in our house, so I'm going up and down, you know, but at the same time, it's, I definitely don't get as much cardio as I should. So anyway, um, hoping again, hoping I stick with it. Uh, it's been really good. Um, and yeah, so anyway, it's, Yay, yay, working out. <laughs> so anyway, that is another thing that I've been doing this week or that's what's what's new with me. Um, I'm still watching Victoria, which is on PBS. It's, um, when I'm on season two, I think I'm halfway through season two. Still a really, really good show. I've really been enjoying it. Um, and yeah, so I think that is it for this week and I will leave it there. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please like and subscribe. Uh, there's the button below and I prop the buttons probably right here. I do that every week. It's like, ah, da, 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 da. I'm getting the hang of this, you guys. It's been what, only seven, eight years? I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah. All right. So that's it. Happy knitting and I will see you next time. Bye. Ba -da -da.